If you're looking for a way to get very efficient kills in Rise of Kingdoms, guess what, baby? The technique that I named cheeseburgering still is the very best way to do it. And if you don't know what that is, or you're wondering what the best marches are in 2024 and beyond, man, I've got to say, there are some new commanders that have been released, like Liu Chat, that are absolutely insane. So stick around in this video for the things you need to know about getting super efficient kills in the open field, cheeseburgering, with the most powerful commanders around. This works. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskel Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms, and if you've been following along with my KVK series, we're actually in KVK with 1960, one of the strongest, most feared kingdoms in the game, and the bar always moves for what people think you're supposed to be able to accomplish, and as soon as you accomplish it, the bar changes again and again and again, but people thought we'd never be able to hold a position against 1960. But here we are doing exactly that. Now, if they want to do attack, they could, but they don't. And they don't because the cost is too high. Now, in between those fights over territory, there is a lot of cheeseburgering going on from both sides. Cheeseburgering is where you pop out of your city with a march. Ideally, you hit things that are right outside your city, and then you pop back into your city before they have a chance to really do anything effective. And the reason that you can do this, that you can take a march, pop out of your city, do some damage, and pop back in, is that you are going to start generating rage the moment you've popped out of your city and are hitting somebody. Now, all the other marches that come over to hit you are going to have no rage because they're just walking over to hit you. And every single thing that's hitting your march is actually making you generate even more rage. So you will use your active skills before the enemy gets to use theirs. Then you will go back in your city and this is cheeseburgering. In a nutshell, that's how it works. And because you used your active skills and they didn't use theirs, and because you're going to bring area of effect damage in, in many cases, you're going to get a lot of damage in. And it's incremental. It's not very much, but it is very effective. Now, this is a technique that you can use to get very efficient trades, as I've described. It's not actually something I personally have been doing um, a lot of at all since we got into this locked position with 1960, because like, if you want to get into a pissing contest for resources and speed ups with 1960, spoiler alert, you're just going to lose. So I actually haven't done much open field fighting at all ever since we got into this position because it's been completely unnecessary. The few times I have left my city is to issue reports like this where we're defending garrisons. So for the most part, I'm just kind of chilling, right? But if you wanted to go and do this cheeseburgering thing, okay, there are actually several really cool marches that you can go use for this that are shockingly effective. And I've been chatting with folks that have been doing this against one of the very strongest kingdoms in the game. So this works even against 1960. And if it works against one of the very strongest kingdoms in the game, even if you don't think they're the strongest kingdom, for at, a, at an individual player by player level, their players, I would say very comfortably on average, are stronger than any other kingdom in the game. Um, and then, so, you know, they aren't like a three or four alliance kingdom like 1093 is in this KVK, but player for player for a one alliance kingdom, I don't think you actually can get any stronger than, than GT. I mean, dude, they're like 20 billion power before they started fighting, right? So anyways, the point I'm trying to make is that these combos work. The first type of combo you can make is called a skill cycling cheeseburger. A skill cycling cheeseburger tries to use their skill cycle faster than the enemy. It's pretty straightforward. They have a lower rage requirement or a faster speed of range gain. So for example, Huo is an end game commander. They have a rage cost reduction of 150. However, you do have to be outside of your city for some amount of time before you can enjoy that benefit. Other commanders that have reduced rage cycles, for example, if you're in the early game, weirdly enough, you've got Khan. I'm not saying this is a late game thing. I'm not even saying necessarily I think people should be doing this with Khan in the early game, but like his active skill has a lower rage requirement and he reduces it by even more. So you're going to skill cycle faster with commanders like this. Then you put behind that fast skill cycling commander some area of effect damage. I've seen Esong be used for this. I've seen Zuge Liang be used for this, where they're going to do a fat 
circle area of effect damage. So if the enemy rolls up on your territory, you can hit them with some fat AOE. And this works whether you're trying to prevent them from hitting a flag or you're just trying to um, discourage them from standing on your territory. It is important to make it so that enemy marches get weakened. And because in this game, you can just go back to your city and bring a fresh march and the enemy might have to walk some number of minutes to get back into position, there's definitely value to doing this activity with an AOE farmer. On the flip side of things, another way that you can cheeseburger is instead with instant proc damage. Now, there are a number of commanders that are shockingly good for this, and I would say some of the best instant proc damage commanders at this moment in time end up including the combination of Liu Cha and Alexander the Great. Now, this is not a combo I personally would recommend for the open field. If you had it, I think it would be fine. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I personally would not put it at meta. But the reason this works for cheeseburgering specifically is as follows. First of all, Liu Cha has area of effect damage. We know that's going to be good. Second of all, he has instant proc smite damage. Third of all, his expertise makes it so you could launch an extra basic attack, which is the equivalent of instant proc damage, but kind of better because you could trigger your instant proc damage. So not only do you get the extra damage of the extra normal attack, you also get the extra potential damage of inflicting or triggering um, instant proc damage. And the reason the Alex pairing works here is mostly because he has a 1,700 instant proc damage on his second skill. Now, I'm not saying you should invest in Alexander the Great. In fact, quite the opposite. I would say you should not invest in Alexander the Great in 2024. Unfortunately, unless you are a big whale, then you could go for it. But most people, you just have to hoard your sculptures till you get to KVK Season 3 and just pick the endgame commanders. With that said, if you had Alexander the Great and you pair with Liu Che, my gosh, apparently you can pull down some really crazy trades with instant proc damage. And there it is. Really, really powerful. Now, there are many other commanders that do instant proc damage. For example, if you wanted a cavalry instant proc damage dealer, we could be looking at, let's uh, say, William. William is a good choice. On the topic earlier, by the way, of commanders that have a faster rage cycle, XY is sometimes used for this activity. He can be pretty good. And historically, Harold Sigurdsson has been an all-star. Pakal, primary, Harold, secondary. Now, this brings us to the third category of cheeseburgering, which is the counterattackers. And I would put probably the Pakal Harold into this category of saying, hey, look, I'm going to pop out of my city. I'm going to skill cycle. I'm going to still go back into my city afterwards and try to take advantage of that. But the way I'm going to get you is with counterattack damage. And combinations like this try to mitigate the damage you're taking. So the more swarmed Pakal gets, the less damage he takes. And also deal lots of counterattack damage. Herald makes it so that your counterattack damage is elevated. Um, and uh, if you're surrounded, you get even more counterattack, which is hilarious. So combinations like this are basically trying to bait people into hitting them, which makes them generate rage faster. They use their active skills even faster than the enemy, and then they piece out of there, and the counterattack damage they do is just astronomic. Another combination that does something very similar is Attila and Takeda. This is like an old school combination. I mean, super old school. Uh, but if we go back to a cav only filter, Attila right over here, he is going to do shocking amounts of normal attack and counter attack and just boosting his all damage, which is really good. Now, I happen to be in a KVK format right now where we have a thing called an artifact. And the artifact is technically an accessory equipment item that goes on your secondary commander. And it converts all instances of one troop type to your desired troop type. So right now I'm using a Gorgo Attila Garrison and I, Attila is an infantry commander, which is crazy. But if you're in one of these KVKs, like I believe Tides of War is one of those KVKs. Uh, I think Storm of Stratagems might be. 
And also, I mean, I'm in Warriors Unbound where you get these artifacts. But if you're in a KVK where you get these artifacts, now you can mix and match some of these different uh, troops and commander types in really cool ways. So for example, you could use Huo with Zuge Leong and turn Zuge Leong into a cavalry commander. I'm like, yeah, I mean, crazy cavalry AOE damage faster than the enemy can react to it is going to hurt. And you can sit there and micromanage, and it's so easy to do this with one march, it does not take much attention to detail. So unironically, if an enemy rolls up on your position, you can rack up a lot of kills going in and doing this, and this counts towards your 30 million kills. Now, I actually don't have my 30 million kills yet. I basically all but entirely stopped fielding the moment we got into this defensive position that I that I was describing earlier, because again, getting into a resource and speed up pissing contest with 1960 is a fully 100% guaranteed way to lose the KVK. So we're doing the thing that is not 100% fully guaranteed to lose the KVK, which is just chilling out a little bit. And I've taken that to heart fully, so I'm really not doing much in the field at all personally. Um, so anyone that makes a joke that that's all that Chiskel Gaming is doing has no clue what they're talking about, because... I really haven't been doing almost any of that at all. In fact, when this zone opened, I was actually number one on the kill boards um, for open fielding and, and uh, sev wounds inflicted. So like, yeah, look, some number of people are always just going to accuse me of using cheesy tactics, but I want you to remember something. No matter how cheesy people say the tactics are, they work. And if it works, you should be doing it. Any tactic that's in a game don't make up some imaginary rule that doesn't exist to prevent you from being successful. You should use the tactic, almost certainly. And I'll give an example of this before we wrap up the video from the Street Fighter World Championship. Yes, Street Fighter from back in the day. Um, and the person who won the World Championship used a technique that was taboo. There was no rule that said you couldn't use this technique, but they used it and they won. And what is this technique? Well, if you've ever played Street Fighter, it's a game where you're basically battling against another uh, player. It's 1v1. And the edge, the sort of edge of the screen is an invisible barrier where like you can't, you can't back your fighter up any further. You actually bounce off the edge of the screen. And the taboo is that you're really not supposed to use um, an infinite throw glitch at the edge of the screen where you you basically catch them at the edge of the screen and you throw them against the edge and they bounce off and you catch them again before they can do anything and you throw them again and you catch them and you throw them. You're not supposed to do that. It's like, there's no rule. It's just pe people don't think you should do it because it's not cool, okay? But the person who won the world championship got the enemy into a position where he could infinitely throw him off the wall and that's what he did and he won. And now he's the world champion. And the point I'm trying to make is that Winners don't make rules that don't exist. There's no rule that says you can't cheeseburger. And despite what people may say or post or do to try to undermine what you've done or how you've done it, you just need to remember that no matter what people say about how they don't like the technique, how they don't like that you're knocking them on territory in a way that is uncomfortable or unfun for them, it's working. And if it's working, you should defend your territory with it because it works. <laughs> and if the developers don't like it to be in the game, they could get rid of it. But guess what? It's been in the game for literally th the entire time the game has been here. And the developers have known about it. What do we Dude, I've been talking about this for years and it's still here. So the fact that it's still here, hey, look, the developers, they must be on board with it being in the game. Otherwise, they'd have removed it. So you should use it to your advantage, okay? And... I'll give an example of another game, Call of Dragons, made by the same folks who make Rise of Kingdoms, and I really enjoy Call of Dragons, but in that game, your commanders actually have stamina, and every time you leave your city to fight, you lose stamina. So you can't technically cheeseburger infinitely in that game like you can in this game. So take advantage of it. It's here. Use it to defend. Anyone who says that it's lame, too bad for them. It, it's effective. You should do what's effective, okay? Um, winners don't make rules that don't exist. And there's no rule that says you cannot cheeseburger. If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. Um, one other thing I'll just leave you with in terms of equipment, just a little bonus tip, is that if you're going to tweak your accessories, counter attack damage and normal attack damage are very, very good. If you have access to high-end accessories that can do those things for you, that's amazing. Um, uh, also, 
depending on how long you're going to sit out there and get swarmed, a Horn of Fury can be very good to generate rage to skill cycle faster. So rage generators can also be very, very good. And, you know, most people that are watching a video like this are probably looking at the epic tier, potentially. And like at the epic tier, both of those accessories are going to be kind of cool. So one accessory you could use will reduce the counterattack damage you take, which is fine because you're going to pop out of the city, hit something opportunistically and pop back in. That's pretty good. And another will reduce the rage generated by the enemy, which is also good because remember, you're trying to skill cycle before they do and then go back into your city. So if you enjoyed the vid, again, toss that like on here. Uh, oh yeah, Lucky Coin actually is really good for this because once you start getting swarmed, you get a lot of opportunities to trigger the shield, which is kind of nice. Um, and if you're looking for more information about this KVK, you're like, wait a minute, Chiskel was number one on the kill board for a bit? Yep, card will be in the end screen for that. Um, check out that stream. And if you want the context on this KVK where we're battling against one of the strongest kingdoms in the game, I'll have that card there as well.